Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today we're going to start coordinate geometry. Woohoo! A little different, a little change of pace from what we've been doing. Uh, so let's get started. You're going to learn some new formulas, so I hope you've got your note-taking materials ready. All right, let's start with, I'm actually going to going to do this a little different than I've done in the past. Uh, I'm just going to give you this formula first and then try to show you why it makes sense or where it comes from. Uh, so this is the distance formula. Uh, and it's for finding the distance between any two points in a coordinate plane. So if you have the coordinates of any two points, A and B, uh, where the coordinates are the X and the Y, so X1, Y1, and the coordinates of the second point are X2, Y2, uh, the, the formula for finding the distance between them in the coordinate plane is the, it's the, in words, it's the difference between the X's squared plus the difference between the y's squared, and then the square root of that whole thing. Um, so let's look at an example, and then I'll show you why this crazy formula actually isn't that crazy at all. It's actually something very familiar to you. Um, so let's just look at an example. The distance between these two points, so again, using the formula, that's the distance is the square root of the difference between the two x values. Now. It actually doesn't matter whether you call, so I, I might look at this and say, all right, so L is going to be my x1, y1, and K is going to be my x2, y2. But it actually doesn't matter if you wanted to switch those around and do it that way. That's actually completely fine. You'll get the same answer. Just make sure you don't mix them up. You can't switch the x1 with the y2 and vice versa. Okay, so I'm going to leave it like that since that's how it's set up. So the difference between the x's, so that's x2, which is 6, minus x1, and this is where you got to be careful. It's minus negative 2 squared. And then the y's, y2 is negative 2, minus the y1, which is 4, and that's squared. And now when we go to simplify, you really got to watch out. That's 6 minus negative 2, which is 6 plus 2, which is 8, so that's 8 squared, which is 64. This is negative 2 minus 4, which is negative 6. And negative 6 squared, negative 6 times negative 6, is positive 36. So really got to be careful with your arithmetic there. And you see that's just the square root of 100, which is 10. Let's see what that looks like on the graph, because it's going to help you to see where this formula comes from and why it makes sense. So k was at negative 2, 4 and L was at 6, negative 2. Okay, and we're finding the distance between those two. Okay, and here is the kicker. Watch what I can do with this in the coordinate plane. I can turn this into a right triangle where the legs of the right triangle are here and here. Right, the legs, the legs go from here there's one leg, there's the other leg, and the hypotenuse is the distance. It's the segment between the two points. That's the distance. Well, <coughs> excuse me, this right here, this leg here that I'm looking at, to find the length, well, it's just going on the x from negative 2 to 6. It's the difference between the two x values, right? This negative 2 is the x value of this point, k, and this value, 6, is the x value of L. So to find out how long this is, using just the coordinates, it's the difference between th this x value and this x value. It's the difference between 6 and negative 2. It's 6 minus negative 2, which is, of course, 8. Now, you could have just counted that, but we were able to do the distance using the formula without having to make a graph, which is kind of the point of the formula. Um, so that's where that came from. And then same thing with the, with the vertical leg, with this leg. It's the difference between the two y values. So it's the 4 minus the... Oops, sorry, I did that backwards. It's No, that's fine. It actually doesn't matter. It's the 4 minus the negative 2, or we did it the other way around. That's why it doesn't matter which order. You're sort of seeing that here. The difference between them is 6. And it doesn't matter if it was 6 or, in the way I did it here, negative 6, because when you square it, you still get that 36. 
Okay, getting back to why we're squaring. Well, what's happening here? This is a right triangle. This is Pythagorean theorem. So this leg squared plus this leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And then to find the hypotenuse, you take the square root, and that's effectively where that distance formula comes from. Do you have to know that? No, but it's kind of cool. Okay, moving on. Midpoint formula. Uh, so the, here's the midpoint formula. You should go ahead and write that down. Um, and what you should notice, again, if we have two points, A and B, X1, Y1, and X2, Y2, the midpoint, the, the, the midpoint of the segment connecting those two points can be found. It's one formula, but it's sort of two formulas in one, because this part tells you the X coordinate of the midpoint. This point tells yeah, this tells you the y-coordinate of the midpoint. Um, so it's kind of like two formulas in one, but we put it all as one big formula. Easiest way, I think, to remember this is this is just the average of the two x values, right? Add them up and divide by two. And this is just the average of the two y values. Again, add them up and divide by two. All right, let's do an example. Uh, so if I call this my x1, y1, and this my x2, y2, forgot the comma there. Um, so the midpoint is going to be the average of the two x's, so that's 3 plus 7 over 2, and the y value is going to be the average of the two y's, so 5 plus 9 over 2, and if we just simplify those, we get 3 plus 7 is 10, divided by 2 is 5, 5 plus 9 is 14, divided by 2 is 7, and that is the midpoint of the segment between those two points. Just to confirm that, if we look at 3, 5, Q, and S is at 7, 9, if I wanted to find the midpoint of the segment that contains them, or that connects them, sorry, um, it looks like, just visually, looks like it should be right there, and our formula confirms that, that 5, 7 is in fact the midpoint. Um, and you can see why this formula works. It's just the average of the two x's. It's kind of in between the two x values. Between the 3 and 7 is 5. Halfway between the y values, the 5 and the 9, halfway between is 7. So it's just the average of the x and the average of the y tells you where it is. Um, and what's nice is you can do that without needing the graph. I just did that so you could see it. Okay, one more. This one you should be familiar with, slope. You probably did this a lot, but just a little refresher. So slope is just a measure of the steepness of a line. Um, it's a way of measuring it, in, in a, usually in a fraction form or some kind of a ratio. Um, and using those coordinates, you should know this already, but if you don't remember it, just go ahead and write it down. It's the difference between the y's over the difference between the x's. You've probably also seen that written as delta y over delta x, and that's just the change in the y over the change in the x or the differences. All right, let's look at an example. Again, you just have to be careful with your signs here. So if I call this my x1, y1, and this my x2, y2, the difference between the two y's, so y2 minus the y1, that's 3 minus negative 1. And the difference between the x's, 3 minus negative 3. So 3 minus negative 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. This is 3 plus 3, which is 6. And then we can reduce that and get a slope of 2 thirds. Hooray! Um, and then just one quick little summary, just to kind of refresh your memory. You know that positive slopes visually on a graph are lines that are going uphill, right? Going uphill is positive. Negative, if you're feeling down, you're going downhill. That's negative slopes. Um, and then a slope of a horizontal line, that's, uh, that's going to be a zero slope, a slope of zero, right? If you think uphill, going uphill is positive. Here, let me do a little visual here. All right, so if that's positive... And then that's negative. What's between the positive numbers and the negative numbers? Zero. So that's why that's a zero slope. And that's very different from an undefined slope. When you have a vertical line, an undefined slope, um, that's very different from a slope of zero. So an undefined slope is a vertical line. Um, and if you think of slope as sort of measuring what it would be like to ride your bike, um, you know, a positive slope means you're, you're riding up the hill. A negative slope means you're riding down the hill. A zero slope means a nice, gentle, flat surface. 
But if you try to ride your bike up this thing, what's going to happen? You're going to fall off the mountain and die. And that's undefined. We don't want that. Um, so just try to keep those straight. And that's all for today. Thanks.